Hello, my name is Nanti, and welcome back to my Sun Wukong solo guide. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at good matchups and bad matchups for Sun Wukong in the solo lane. Now, let's start with the assassins. Um, assassins on being uh, highly picked in the solo lane currently. Um, it's just it's just how the meta is really. Um, since the blue stone changes, you know, certain gods become more powerful and they can sort of outpoke the assassins. They can sort of, well, the kind of blue stone kind of takes away a bit of what the assassins had, which is like, you know, the hyper kill potential in lane. Um, since, you know, warriors now can just output pretty much as much damage as assassins early on and still have, you know, the extra tankiness from being a warrior, they're just kind of not very favoured, so. You won't see too many assassins picked, but. You'll still see some, so I'm just going to go over them now. Arachne, um, again, I don't like Arachne very much in solo. Um, she's supposed to be that kind of hype kill kind of thing, but she doesn't really have that with Bluestone. Um, uh, with Bluestone kind of on the board as a thing, so I don't like her that much. Her lane clear is quite slow, she can be out pressured by a lot of gods, such as Hades or Sun Wukong. Uh, Baxura, same thing really. Warriors can just kind of out damage him now, since they have Bluestone. Um, his lane clear isn't that good, he doesn't have super high kill potential at level 5 like he used to, so it's hard for him to snowball in the lane. So once again, he's, he's, if you can get him to the late game and I'm just roam around like as an assassin killing people and picking up kills then it's fine but it's hard to make work. Bastet, um, kind of a cheese laner, um, you pick her in solo lane just to split push, uh, she doesn't really you know, have any sustain in the lane. Or anything that means, you know, that makes her a good solo laner. She's just there because high kill potential and good split push ability. Um, so, yeah, Wukong again can just... He's got blue stone, you can out damage her, you know. You'll have a ton of health pots, so you can just sustain through her poke pretty fairly easily. And if she ultimates you, then you can just ultimate the guy out of it, so it's not it's not a difficult thing to do. And obviously if you buy then teleport during the game, she can't split push. You can just stay in your lane, stop when you split push in and then teleport over to team fights when you need to. Fenrir can be, uh, still be, you know, quite scary. Uh, Bluestone is good for Fenrir because um, it procs off his jump and his brutalize so he gets a hell of a lot of extra damage. You just need to be careful when you're in the lane with him. Um, try and force him to choose between jumping on you or jumping on the minions. So when he hits an enemy god, he gets to reduce cooldown on his jump, so he's going to be trying to. He's looking to hit you basically with his, um, his jump. So, just try and stay away from the lane. Try and just uh, use your cudgel to kind of poke the lane from a distance from the side of the wave. You know, that kind of thing. Try not to just stand in the middle of the wave to allow him to easily jump on top of you. You'll find you get into these weird kind of standoffs when you're up against a Fenrir where you kind of both just kind of stay away from the lane because <laughs> neither one wants to get in the middle of the lane to so allow the other person to damage them and their abilities uh, damage them and the minions with their abilities so it's kind of a weird lane um, but I think you'll have like the advantage in it definitely if the um, Fenrir is going for the late game kind of uh, auto attacky build then feel free to just kind of put a bit more pressure on because he's going to have a lot less damage early on so yeah, you could just kind of out pressure them then. So you just need to look at their build, check if he um, buys a short bow at the start, you'd be like, oh okay, I can put a hell of a lot of pressure on this Fenrir. If he's just got, you know, blue stone, boots and a load of pots, then you have to be a bit more careful. You don't want to allow a Fenrir to uh, snowball, especially if he's gone red pot. Fenrirs often go red pot at the start, so if you see as a red pot, just, you know, back off a bit. Um, he's invested 450 gold, so he's looking to get a kill to make that investment worth it. Um, so you just need to basically, you know, seed a little bit of lane pressure, allow some minions into the tower, it doesn't matter too much, you know, he's, Fenrir's already a 450 gold down, so long as you don't die to him, then you should be fine. Worth noting that um, Fenrir's Brutalize does follow you through your bird form, so you need to be a little bit careful about that. You can't just fly away from Fenrir, if you can Brutalize on you, he'll just, he'll just chase you, so something else to be wary of. Okay, what other ones do we get in the solo lane? Uh, Kali has sort of seen a little bit of play. Um, it's a big, it's, well, it's, it's not a bit greedy. It's very greedy to put a Kali in solo lane. You know, the idea is that Kali's a late game god, so just kind of put her in there and have a farm. But she can just get out pressured so easily that it's just 
it's risky, you know. If you have a decent jungler or you're just, you know, if you're just very good at Wukong yourself and you you know you know that you can, you know, try and force out your ult in certain times, you'll just out pressure her really easily. You'll have complete lane control, you'll she'll lose a ton of gold. You'll come into the team fights in the mid game a hell of a lot stronger than which she will, so you shouldn't worry too much about Kali. Uh, the only, the only, I guess the only thing you have to worry about is you need to work out if you're her target or not, because <laughs> that can be a bit awkward. You might think you would win a fight easily, but then she has that increased penetration against you, so you just need, it's just something you have to work out. But I would say mostly it's fairly easy for a uh, Wukong to dominate a Kali and Ling. Same with Loki. Like Loki's just again kind of a split pushy cheese god, you know, one shot mages late game. But you can stop him from getting that late game. You'll always out pressure him. You'll make him lose a ton of gold to his tower. You'll probably be able to get a couple of kills off if you're clever. So don't be afraid of a Loki. Loki is an easy matchup for you. Uh, who else do we see? Rat sometimes with the like emerald. He can be annoying. He's hard to lock down with his ultimate plus his dashes. Um, and his sustain is quite nice in the solo lane. So he's, sometimes you can think you got him low and then he'll just heal up a huge amount. So... But once again, he's an assassin and he's squishy as hell early on, so you can just pressure him a lot. And his lane clear isn't that good. Other than that, uh, Mercury maybe, sometimes you can see. Um, he might be coming back a bit. I think he got a minor buff in the last patch. Um, so he gets a little bit more power from his movement speed items. So who knows, maybe Mercury will come back in a way, but I doubt it. And that pretty much concludes it for like the solo laners that you're expected to see. Obviously the other ones can be played, but I'm not going to waste my time with all of them, this video will be, end up being half an hour long. Okay, so moving on to Warriors. Um, let's start with Bologna. Uh, Bologna is quite strong. Um, you should probably out pressure her with Bluestone, honestly. You'll have more... Uh, uh, what do you call it? You'll have more lane clear than a Bologna early on. Um, if you're clever, you can interrupt her bludgeon damage with your ox form, although that's quite awkward to do, <laughs> honestly. Because you have to kind of, you know, run through the wave. It's a bit weird. Run through your own uh, minion wave. But it can happen. Um, you have your ultimate to counter her ult if she ults on top of you, so you won't get stunned. And then you just heal up the damage that she's done to you and jump back down on top of her. You don't have to worry about her disarm or her block stacks too much. Because um, early on, a lot of your damage will be coming from your abilities, since you have, you know, the blue stone. So a lot of your damage will be outside of your auto attack. So you don't have to worry about that too much. I think you will have lane control early on against Bologna. Um In terms of team fights, her initiate is probably a little bit stronger than yours, because she has, you know, the uh, Roman Invicta jump in stun people. Whereas your initiate is kind of like your tiger stun. That's your kind of thing. So. You have to worry about kind of being initiated on, so you want to be like aggressive against the Bologna in team fights, just to allow her not to initiate on top of you and force her to use it ult to kind of get away and save herself. Right, moving on. Uh, Chuck, uh, you should probably like out pressure Chuck. Well, no, you'll uh, as as always is with Chuck, you'll just still make the lane pretty much, but you'll outperform him late game in team fights. Chuck doesn't do anything late game. You know, he has like a silence. And a slow, <laughs> that's it. Whereas you'll have, you know, you'll you'll be able to stay in a team fight, get out of a team fight, jump back in. You've got stun and knock up. You know, you can do a lot more. And you got a lot more damage as well, honestly. Okay, moving on to Guan Yu. Um, Guan Yu is stronger now because of Blue Stone. He kind of got affected in the same way as Sun Wukong. So he's got you know more damage on his abilities now. He's a little bit stronger, um, and he's been buffed as well, so his heal now stacks when he damages enemy gods, as well as when he gets damaged, and his dash is on a short cooldown, so he's a little bit stronger now, um, so you'll see Guan Yu a lot more, in the same way that you see Sun Wukong a lot more, um, but it's actually a good matchup for Sun Wukong. Um, Taolu Assault can be easily interrupted by your Tiger Stun, so if you're boxing him and he Taolu Assaults, always make sure you've got your Tiger Stun ready, don't use your Tiger Stun before he Taolu Assaults, or else he'll mess you up. <laughs> and if he ults, then you can just ult out of it, so avoid a lot of his damage. It's a really good matchup for Sun Wukong. Hercules, um, again, just don't get pull pushed at level 2 into the tower and then die. <laughs> if you don't do that, you'll be alright, most likely. 
Uh, Hercules is, you know, fine. He's very kind of, he's got low mobility though, so he can be easy to gank early on um, before he gets his kind of, you know, super heal online. So he can be shut down quite easily, and he has not a lot of poke abilities in the lane because he has to kind of commit his uh, Earthbreaker for a Driving Strike combo into kind of clearing the lane, whereas you'll still have your Tiger Stun available to clear, or you might still have something else. So it's pretty much an easy lane, just yeah, don't get killed at level 2, and then after that, just kind of don't allow him to get any good team fight things off, you know, like double Earthbreakers and a double Driving Strikes into a boulder can kind of change team fight, so. So long as you're, again, aggressing on top of a Hercules, it's harder for him to do what he wants to do, which is just, you know, be a huge pressure on your team. Uh, Odin, starting to see a little bit of play. Um, it's kind of... Well, Odin's not played to kind of win the lane. He's um, he's pl be played in solo laner because they want a counter to a heal. So if they have something like a Hell or a Ra or an Aphrodite somewhere, then you pick Odin to stop that, so... He's not really looking to like win lane, he's just looking to be there, you know, bird bomb clear the wave, just keep doing that until late game, and then just use his ultimate to shut down the healers so your team can win, pretty much so. Um, yes, yeah, not much to say about it really, just be wary of bird bomb, it does do a hell of a lot of damage early on, try not to get hit by it if possible, so be careful when you're standing in the lane, you know, just, it's, it's kind of sometimes wise just to give a bit of leeway to Odin just so he doesn't mess you up. Um, it is worth noting, if you ultimate when you're inside his cage, you will heal, because you're technically outside of his ring. You know, you're above it, <laughs> so you will heal. You won't you won't be stopped by the healing, so that's good. Moving on, Cyrus. Uh, Cyrus used to be super lane dominant, but, you know, since Bluestone, uh, Wukong can deal with him quite easily. Even before Bluestone, um, you know, you saw Cyrus versus some Wukong a lot in the SPL. Um, and it was always kind of even, with a slight advantage to Osiris. Now it's more a slight advantage to Sun Wukong. <laughs> but Osiris is still dangerous. Um, his ultimate can shut down your healing. Um, he has, you know, all the physical damage mitigation, all the all the other stuff, so... He could still be scary. Moving on. Raven. Uh, Raven's not that bad now. You know, since his buffs, he's like, okay. He has a lot of damage, like, super early on. Um, his auto attacks hit like you know trucks, which is really hard to like deal with. But his sustain's kind of shitty, and again he has no escape. Like his escape is his two, and it's not really an escape because you don't really move that far. <laughs> so if your jungler can come over and gank him, then it's an easy gank. So shouldn't worry too much. Tier uh, similar thing to Hercules. Don't get caught by like a blink fearless level like two. Just check his active see if he has blink. Um, he has to then commit his abilities to the wave really to clear it so he doesn't have much poke available to him. He has a lot of sustain so it's kind of hard to kill him and his ult can be used to escape but you shouldn't worry too much. And Vamana's just trash, just whatever. <laughs> you, you might be able to kill him if he's a bad player. Um, but late game he's not really going to do anything. He can't really hyper carry like he used to. He has to get Fatalis for his ult to be useful and that just sacrifices so much of his damage that it's hardly worth it. So Don't worry about Vamana. Okay, Guardians. Uh, let's talk about Jing Chen. Uh, I played him in a video, and it was kind of the first thing I've had with him. And I was like, oh, he might be strong, he might not, I'm not sure. You know, he has a lot of damage, but does he have the lane clear? Um, turns out he is quite strong, just because his damage is, just makes it worth his kind of shitty lane clear. Um, so, yeah. Be careful with him. A um, couple of things worth noting. His ult has a delay. So the animation will go off before you get caught. So you have a split second where you can ultimate when you see him ultimate, and then you'll be you won't get caught in it, and you'll be just be CC immune. So I've played a Sun Wukong against Xing Chen a couple of times, and I've learned that. So that's something to keep an eye on if you ever come up with Xing Chen. Just watch out for when he's ulting. You will have a small opportunity to ult yourself. Other things though, you should just out clear him really, out damage him, pressure him really early on. Um, it should be fine. He is getting buffed, I think, or like his one is supposed to activate the dot on minions as well, but currently it doesn't. It only does it with gods, and it's supposed to activate on minions, so you'll be a little bit stronger. So his like lean is like lean clear is gonna get better. But as Wukong, you should still out clear him. Um, moving on, Kabraken, um, still kind of scary. 
Um, it's hard for him to burst down a Wukong though because of his ultimate plus his bird form, so that's fine. Hades. Uh, you can kind of kill Hades now. It's like <laughs> that's the funny thing. You almost have as much like lane clear, lane dominance as a Hades with the blue stone. <laughs> so yeah, Hades isn't as scary as it used to be. Who else you see? Sobek occasionally. Again, Sobek's kind of picks in a similar way to Odin as kind of an anti-healer thing. So he's not too worried about winning the lane or dominating the lane or 1v1ing you. He's just going to be trying to farm. But you you can pressure him because you love a lot more wave clear than he will. So you can put out a lot of damage, force him back to base a lot. Ymir. Again, you should have more damage. Just need to be careful. Uh, you can ult out of his ultimate, so that's useful. Mages. Um, so we're starting to see more mages in the solo lane, like the healers, Aphrodite, Changa, uh, Hell, Ra. Um, it's fine for Wukong because of Blue Stone, you can just out pressure them super hard. He, he's got so much kill potential against the mage, it's unreal. You can kill mages so quickly, you know, pre 5. Especially something like Hell. Like, classically, Hell is supposed to be seen as like, a good counter to Wukong because. Um, you know, you cudgel the wave, and then she just heals it up, and it's like, oh, well, how, how do I clear the wave now? Um, but honestly, when I've gone into it, I've just been like, okay, I'm just going to go red pot and then kill her. <laughs> and she has just so ba low base health, you just you just walk into the lane, she's like, oh, I'm going to heal the wave, and I'm like, I don't care, I'm going to kill you, and now you're dead. <laughs> so, that's my advice, going against hell, just be super aggressive. If you want to, you can go, you can start mids, run to the blue, and then kill her at the blue, even before she gets to the wave. Stop again near blue buff, which is always nice. So I don't think health that good against the Wukong. Like just just kill her. Just go red pot and kill her. <laughs> um other gods, Nuwar, kind of a similar thing, just kill her. All these gods. Isis is a bit like weird. If you see her, she has a lot of lane clear. So it sometimes can be hard to aggress into an Isis. She also has the silence plus the stun to stop aggression from your um seventy two transformations. So that can be annoying. You just have to worry about, you know, outperforming her late game in team fights. Um, if you can aggress onto her during a team fight when she's not focused on you, you'll probably be able to kill her quite quickly, so just keep that in mind. That's kind of the thing with all mages. If their attention isn't focused like on you, then you can kill them very quickly, so I that's like a broad statement for all of these. Uh Aukong, you're probably not gonna see in solo lane that much anymore since like you need the low cooldown on Wild Storm because it was your, pretty much your only lane, lane clear, and without it, you're probably just going to get out pressured so hard. So, yeah, I, I don't expect to see Oquan very much in solo anymore. And hunters, you'll probably mess up quite hard. Um, some of the hunters will go for the blue stone as well, such as Ul. You'll see sometimes Medusa, Ho Yi, but you don't really have to worry about it too much. You can just pretty much just kill them. <laughs> It's kind of greedy putting a hunter in solo lane, honestly, without any like support. So, just you know, try and keep the pressure on early. You know, you have loads of health pots. They probably won't have any health pots because they're going for like rushing into a death toll or whatever, or into transcendence. So, yeah, just put the pressure on. Hopefully, your jungler is not incompetent and will come over and be like, "Ah, there's a juicy hunter here I can kill with no support to keep them safe." So, yeah, don't worry about that. And I think that pretty much concludes it. Um, again, Freya comes in under the same category as Hunters, like don't worry about it, just you know, your jungler will come over, you can kill her, whatever, easy enough. Um, I will talk about uh, junglers, I think I'll talk about junglers that you can come up against which might be a bad matchup for you since they do have like quite a big influence on your lane. Um, so I'll talk about Fenrir, can like brutalize and follow your bird form, so that can be bad if he's a jungler and he's ganking you. Um, but you can like ultimate to get away from his ultimate, so that can be good. Well, the junglers will be annoying. Um, Circuit will shut down your healing in your ultimate, so you're not going to get any healing, which is pretty annoying. Um, she can also chase you because she has so much mobility, especially now that junglers get blink. She can like blink on you, taunt you, you know, do a full combo, and then even if you kind of alt and leap away, she can leap on top of you again. So that could be annoying. I think they're the most annoying ones. Uh, Phantos can silence you out of your bird form with his scythe, which can be annoying. In the same way Thor can, uh, ha like, um, oh, what's it called? What's his two called? Uh, tectonic Rift. <laughs> he can stun you out of your bird form, so 
that could be um, something to be scary of. Were these two probably like ward near the fire giant pit because they'll often ult from there to like land on top of you. So be careful of that. Just put a ward in the fire giant pit and you'll probably be able to see him coming. Uh, Hunbats, similar thing to Xing Chen is ult has like a slight animation before the um, like the fear goes off so you can ult preemptively if you're quick enough. So you don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, I think that pretty much concludes all the bad junglers you can come up against. Bastet's fine, you can just like fly away as a bird if she cats you. And you're slow immune in the bird form so they won't be able to keep up with you. And that pretty much concludes it. Okay, well there we go. Thank you for watching. That has been good matchups and bad matchups as well as a little bit about junglers that you might come up against in the solo lane. Uh, next video is going to be part 4 and I'm going to be taking you through a gameplay video of me playing some Kong in solo lane. Um, so that should be fun. And that concludes this video. I hope you've enjoyed. I've been Nanti, this has been Smite, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.